I am a national literacy consultant for custom education solutions, but I also am a former middle school language arts teacher. And I taught seventh and eighth grade language arts for 10 years. And in the last two years of that, I came to the realization that um, I needed to do more sharing of picture books with my students. And they asked for more picture books. And I would do a few, but not very many. And I realized that picture books were a really important part of working with kids and sharing with my students, even in middle school. So I then um, decided to take some inspiration from one of our favorites, Donalyn Miller. And I decided to take what Donalyn has done with her Book A Day challenge on Twitter, which I'm sure you've seen if you follow Donalyn at all. Um, but I have to give her a big, huge shout out for this because my original idea did come from what she was doing to challenge teachers to read a book a day over their breaks. And I decided, well, why can't I bring that into the classroom? And what you can see there is my board that I used for displaying the books that we would read. And that right there is my inspiration at the beginning of the year to be able to do 180 different picture books with my students, one for every day of the year. And there was such huge benefit to it and such a great experience that I started talking about it to more people and was sharing on Twitter and sharing with authors what some of the favorite books were of my students. And it was just this amazing experience that came out of just sharing stories and what the power of that really is. So what I decided to do was just keep it really simple and really basic and just say every single day, I'm going to pick a picture book. I'm going to read it aloud to my students, give a little quick, did you like it? Did you not? What do you think it's about? And move on and just have that joy of sharing stories as part of our class every day of the year. What happened throughout the year was that it grew and grew, and it stayed as a really simple idea, but it kept that core of wanting to have that joy of reading and that appreciation of stories. And even with seventh and eighth graders, they would often say to me how great it was because they wouldn't expect to have picture books being read to them, but they also appreciated the fact that it helped them have time in their day to be a kid again and would often say, you know, we have so much work we do as seventh graders and so much work we do as eighth graders. It's hard. And it was nice to come into class every day and know that we could just relax for the for the first few minutes that we could just be like kids again and have a little break before we have to go worry about the hard work that we have to do. And that was a really powerful thing that my students were telling me. And I really wanted to listen to that and honor that. And one of the really great things was that by sharing those stories, they really started to feel like more of a community in the classroom. And that community grew and grew. And they felt like they were more a part of what was going on. And I think that by simply sharing stories, we hear from others and we get to know others. So a um, couple images to share with you there. And um, Stacy Reed Miller is a, another teacher who used Classroom Book a Day. And just um, there's a picture of Angie there with some of her students reading. And I'm there with my nieces and nephews, not in the classroom. But just that idea that sharing stories really does connect people. And reading picture books is just about sharing stories. And kids need to hear stories no matter what age they are. Um, and when we share together, there's that much more to talk about. Then we can get into the work of reading. So it was this great. Um, way to really get all of these stories shared with students and by having 180 complete stories that we had experienced together we were then able to do more of that work related to reading and refer back to the books that we had read and the stories that we had shared as we learned how to do more work with reading throughout the year so whether it's being done as a classroom book a day with um, little kids or older kids whether it's being done in your own classroom or um, like in angie's case as an instructional specialist of school-wide um, it's more that spirit of sharing stories every day and what the power of that can be and one of um, our absolute favorite stories that we shared and that my kids always said they went back to as a barometer for how good other books were was um, a book that we found by Kayla Atkinson, To the Sea. And we're super excited that Kayla is with us here today. Um, and I'm sure my former students would be flipping out if they knew he was here and then we get to talk with him. Um, and he's going to share a little bit more with you just about picture books from the author perspective, which is really exciting. So th take it away, Kayla. All right, thanks, um, Jillian. Uh, I'm really excited to be here. So uh, my name is Kel Atkinson, and I'm uh, an author and illustrator. I've written um, three uh, picture books that have um, released so far. And, um, and so, yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about my perspective um, as a, an author illustrator on, uh, on some of these topics. Um, first of all, I'm going to talk a little bit about 
uh, kind of what I hope my stories achieve um, as an author and um, how a lot of it boils down to wanting them um, to connect with people and connect with others. Um, whenever um, someone has a book that releases as an author, there's a lot of ways to kind of measure um, success um, and whether or not you feel that your book um, was a success. And a lot of it comes down to numbers and statistics such as sales or um, reviews or if you've won any awards, which are all great if you have. Um, but for myself, a lot of it um, more comes down to whether or not my books are connected with anyone and whether they connect with others. Um, in all of my work, I really want to try to put something a little bit deeper, um, something kind of like more of a core or more of a heart of my story that I kind of hope extends um, beyond it. Um, something that maybe um, brings about um, questions or um, a connection or a change or just a positive thought. And it's um, in doing this, Trying to um, trying to put something that others can relate to, and while I want all of my stories to be captivating and entertaining for everyone, um, there's always that little other thing that I hope kind of um, reaches beyond that. Um, whenever I'm I'm writing a story, it always kind of has to start um, from me and trying to um, start by putting something that I can relate to, or that I feel, or have felt, or um, or something I'm going through, and and I, I don't think I could ever write something um, just trying to write for something I haven't, something I don't relate to, something I don't feel or never have. I don't think I could genuinely write or, gen or convincingly write and hope that that feeling would get across. So it always kind of starts um, with me writing for myself, but then past that point, it's really hoping that others will kind of um, feel that or grab that or, or um, kind of sense that in there. And... I don't think everyone will, and I can't expect everyone would um, have those same kind of feelings. But if it reaches those people, um, for me, that's the biggest success. That's kind of the most worthwhile thing. And while I think um, it would be amazing to be on New York Times bestsellers list or win a coveted award, um, honestly, knowing that just one person even really connected with what I put out there and really got what I was trying to tell, I mean, that means the world to me. And um, when my first book, um, To the Sea, came out, some of the, uh, the response I got to it was, um, was overwhelming in that sense, in, in the best possible way, um, where I, I heard from um, kind of all ages, where I, I heard from some people who just by chance read my book in a bookstore and either um, really enjoyed it or started crying from reading it, which I don't really want to make people cry, but it was really nice to know they connected with it. Um, as well as uh, teachers who had students who, um, who connected with the main character in my story. And the main character in To the Sea is more of um, a lonely kid who, who doesn't have a lot of friends or doesn't really feel um, noticed or, or like he's really seen for who he is. And to know that there were other people who, who felt that and to know that, that they know that they're not the only ones who feel that, um, all that kind of stuff. And, and knowing that gets across is really everything I try to do and how I kind of measure achievement in my stories or measure whether or not they were, um, were kind of a success. And that's what I try to do. Um, so I'm going to pass it on to Angie now to, um, to take it from here. Hi, I'm Angie Huskin, and I'm an instructional specialist at an elementary school in St. Louis, Missouri. And I was really inspired by Jillian's classroom book a day when she first started talking about it on Twitter. So. I work in an elementary school that really, um, about a year ago, we didn't have a whole lot of community with literacy in our building, and I reached out to Jillian and asked her if I could do classroom book a day, even though I didn't have a classroom. So she was very interested to see how I was going to kind of do that as an instructional coach without my classroom, and sort of that's how this idea grew from there. And really the reality of it is, is we kind of needed to change our literacy landscape. And I'm going to use an analogy from one of Kale's books, Explorers of the Wild. And there's an illustration in that book that the boy and the bear are looking at a mountain. And really, um, we as teachers have very hard jobs. And, you know, the classroom and the building is our wild that we are in every day. And I knew that we could sort of tackle this together. So really maximum change does not come from simplicity and it really just took one brave soul 
willing to sort of kind of make this leap into trying something different. So I chose to do that through sharing stories and picture books. And really, quite honestly, once I started sharing this, and I will talk a little bit about this later and my display and sort of how I was able to do that, really, really quickly, our community and our building and sort of that landscape and that literacy landscape changed quite a bit. So I read aloud a picture book every day in one to two classrooms in my school and as teachers sign up throughout the day. And I do that through a Google Doc, but I have made a commitment to a certain time of the day that I go in and share stories with um, students and teachers. And sort of some of the things that happened when I did that is conversations started happening between students and teachers, between teachers and teachers, and among the students themselves. So a few of the things that really sort of happened from this is that the sharing of the stories increased the volume that was happening in our school library. It also increased the number of picture books that students were checking out from our school library. And I've talked with our librarian a lot about this, and she said she can always tell the students that are doing Classroom Book a Day and their teachers because their circulation habits change a little bit. They have a tendency to gravitate more toward picture books and they also recommend more picture books to each other and to the adults that are working in their classrooms in terms of what they're sharing and what they're reading. And really, this talking became a big part of our school culture and kind of how we shared some of those things and really quickly sort of changed that literacy landscape. Teachers and students are recommending and sharing more picture books than we ever have before. Classroom libraries have increased based on this. And um, a few other things that happen is that students have more choice and voice when they come to check out books from the library. So there's a lot of different things that really led to our community building. And this really happened in a short amount of time. And within probably one school year, the entire dynamic in our building has changed quite a bit. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, some themes with picture books and sort of the importance of picture books and how students and teachers can access some different themes and different teaching points with books. So I'm going to hand it off to the next person. I think that's me again. Um, okay, so I'm going to uh, now talk a little bit about themes like Angie just um, said. And, um, and again, coming kind of from my point of view, I want to talk a little bit about um, how I feel the themes in my stories hopefully relate to all ages and not just um, the picture book demographic, not just ages um, 2 to 7 or 3 to 8 or wherever that sits, and, and sort of how I write for everyone and no one, which kind of sounds strange and hard to do, but um, hopefully I can explain that. <laughs> um, so whenever I am uh, trying to think up, write, or illustrate any of my picture books, um, I can't say I'm ever really thinking about a demographic. I'm never really thinking about um, what a four-year-old needs to learn or what's an important uh, moral or lesson that a three-year-old should have. Um, I can't say I would really be able to do a good job of that. Um, like I mentioned before, I kind of have to write from uh, my own perspective and I don't have kids myself. I'm not a, um, a three-year-old, at least on the outside. Um, so I have to kind of draw from, from my own themes and my own life and, and things I feel. And so that's what I try to do in the themes in my stories um, and try to think of things that, that I feel are kind of universal or um, kind of ageless in, in theme and in what they're, um, what they're trying to get across. I always want to be able to try to present an idea that, um, that can really carry on um, throughout life and maybe something that we feel off and on, maybe um, certain themes that we deal with later in life or earlier in life depending on the person. Um, and trying to figure out how to, how to balance both those things, how to put in um, an entertaining and um, fun or interesting story but, but combine that with a heart with a strong theme and not have it feel um, not have it feel like it's just kind of hammering it in or that it's just trying to really um, kind of hit you over the head with a, a lesson or with a moral where it feels like that's just the point of the story. And as a writer, I think that's one of the trickiest things to do, honestly. Um, but for all my books, it's what I'm trying to do. And in uh, my first book, To the Sea, 
um, on the outset, that story is about um, a boy who is kind of lonely, um, who meets a whale uh, who's lost, and they become friends. And uh, Tim, the boy, ha wants to help Sam the whale get back to the ocean and figure out how to do that. Um, but the real underlining theme of the whole story is more about dealing with um, loneliness and dealing with um, that feeling of, of being kind of unnoticed or being aloof or, um, or just not really feeling like people um, see you or notice you for who you are and, and what it can be like to know you're not alone or when someone actually sees you um, for who you are and, and to feel like you have, you're being noticed, to feel like you're being seen. And I think um, something like that is kind of a universal feeling that I know I felt growing up and I still uh, will feel here and there. And I kind of generally think most of us um, do feel that at some point. And even in today's um, kind of modern uh, times with so much technology and social media and internet, we're so surrounded and connected more than ever. But in another way, I feel like that can sometimes work in the reverse where we can see um, how much attention everyone is getting and we can see how popular everyone is getting that we can start to compare ourselves so easily if we're not getting that and, and feel again that kind of sense of, of being a little aloof or being a little alone um, because it's so easy to compare against what other people have. In my second story, um, Explorers of the Wild, on the outset that story is about um, a boy and a bear who both love to explore and it's about getting outside, it's about um, running around and discovering things and being in the outdoors um, but the underlining uh, theme in that story is more about um, overcoming differences and, and not being scared of something just because it might seem different or maybe because you don't understand or because you don't know it and to look a little further, look a little deeper to understand is this something that there's um, a reason to be afraid or is there not a reason and maybe just because something looks different or feels or appears different um, you might actually be the exact same on the inside. And if you um, can get past your differences and put down those walls, um, how much stronger you can be together and how, how, much, um, how much stronger you can be as a team. And so um, it's about trying to kind of put in those deeper kind of core messages and not feel too heavy handed and, and hope they kind of um, get through and can really appeal to anyone if they're willing um, to pick up a book if they're willing to read it. I'm just hoping that those themes can um, Again go past that story go past that initial idea that that I hope is interesting or captivating but become something um, A little bit more lasting and a little bit deeper within that um, Yeah, so I'm going to pass it over to Jillian now to take over Thanks, Kale. Um, <clears throat> I have to say that, you know, this part, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the benefits of um, sharing picture books. And one of the things that's uh, kind of great is that Kale's stories in particular and his picture books are ones I used in the classroom along with many, many, many others. If I was doing 180 a year, I had a whole lot of authors we were learning. But often my students would say to me, because I dealt with middle schoolers and they are never afraid to tell you what they think at all, um, they, would, they would tell me if they felt like a book was too young and they'd be like, no, Miss Heisey, go give that to the little kids. Go send it down to the second graders. Like, that one's cheesy. That's not us. And I think it speaks to what Kale's talking about with themes and being too in your face sometimes or too obvious. And if it's the type of picture book that has that subtlety and has the ability to really, um, you know, share that, in a way that kids can grasp, it's a really powerful thing in the classroom. So I do want to share a little bit about some of the benefits, and I'll share my screen here in a second. Hopefully it's there. Um, this is really a list that um, I put together. I started last year, and Angie helped me with in a session when we presented on this this summer also, but it's about um, really what we value about sharing picture books and what that can really do because it's all about um, – building the community and everything that comes with it. So a lot of these were things that um, I expected to come from sharing picture books, but also a lot of this was stuff that I didn't really expect and were kind of hidden benefits. Um, one of the things that I will tell you is that 
when I started this, I knew that if I was going to be taking time every single day in school and during class and the valuable time that we have that's very limited in middle school, that if my principal were to walk by and look in and see me reading a picture book with the kids on the floor all around me, she might wonder what's going on. And so just to avoid that, I figured, you know, it's better to, to start off with knowing really what the value is to me and knowing what my criteria was or my reasoning for doing this and knowing um, what I could sell it on. And, and a lot of what's on the list is stuff that I thought of ahead of time and a lot of it actually came from my students later. So um, when, you, when you look at this list about the benefits, it's a lot about community and, and exposing students to diverse stories and helping develop empathy and a lot of that kind of stuff. But there's also pieces in there that are about critical reading and analysis of books, understanding and identifying theme better, discussing all these complete complex texts, um, using text evidence to support claims. But there's also that piece again about just enjoying class and being reminded of a love of picture books. And along with that, students would start to appreciate and have more thoughtfulness about the art in picture books, which is a really great thing. And the joy of reading. And then at the bottom of my list, you'll see that's when I get to the standards and model influency and, and listening skills and all of that. Because to me, it was about more than just the standards. And it was really, although I was going to hit all the standards and it was going to help me with those standards, it was about more than that. And it was about the ability for students to feel that power of sharing stories. And having common text to reference when we're giving text evidence and learning about things was great. But truly, it came from that idea that my ultimate purpose was for kids to, no matter what age, have an appreciation of the stories they were hearing and to be able to have that experience of a joy of reading. And although I keep saying stories, yes, I did read nonfiction picture books. And yes, I read, um, you can tell always, I would say on my display at the end of the year, you can tell when we were doing the research unit because there were a whole lot of nonfiction picture books. And so there were definitely parts where I was tying it into the curriculum and that would be some reasons that I chose things. But I also really kept it at the heart of what did I connect with in a picture book and what did I think my students would connect with or what did I think my students needed when we were having difficulty with being kind to each other we would pull out books like each kindness when um, we were having difficulty with different parts of what was going on in the world and things that were happening in their communities we would pull out the books that would relate to that so for me it was is about knowing a whole lot of picture books because to pick that many you have to know them you have to be reading them and we know that we have to be readers if we're going to help our students be readers but there was also an element for me about making sure that it was a joyful time but also a thoughtful time so if i could pull in the joy of reading and the thoughtfulness about what they're reading that was a great benefit and i have always said and i will say it over and over and over until i'm blue in the face that i don't think theme is an easy thing to teach. It's probably the hardest thing to get students to grasp is theme, but my students knew theme better than any other year that I had taught in my 11 years, the year that we did classroom book a day. And I attribute that to having so many stories that we shared. And I would ask them, what was, you know, what did you think? And sometimes we took longer discussions, sometimes it was shorter discussions, but it was, what did you think about the book? And then what was it about? But no, what was it really about? Because when you ask students, even in middle school, what was it about? They want to give you a summary of the story, which is natural. But we try to hone in on the idea that theme is really going deeper than that. So what was the story really about? So for instance, when we talked about To the Sea, it's like, what was it about? Okay, this boy and this whale that got stranded, but what was it really about? And then they could get to the idea of friendship and they could get to the idea of helping others and all those kinds of things and to really understand pieces like loneliness and that stuff. The other piece that I think was really important and helpful um, relating to theme was that I always told my students there is not one right theme for a book. There could be a wrong theme for a book if you can't defend it with what's in the text, but that I am not the end all be all of knowing what the theme of a book is. And sometimes maybe even the author isn't because we would have authors say, oh, I didn't think about that. But yeah, I guess that works. And what a great thing that is for students to feel that their voice is valued and respected and that they can give answers that aren't necessarily what would be in a teacher's guide or what the teacher might think. And those can be valuable things. And now more of that critical thinking is coming in and the students would try more because they wanted to be able to give an answer that they thought was 
related to the book and could pull out the text evidence and those kinds of things. So that's kind of my overview and a quick glance at um, really that value of sharing the picture books and what the benefits were that came from it. And um, I do love that slide because it's a really easy thing for you to snap a picture of if you need it and you want to try Classroom Book Day and to defend your use of picture books with older kids also or setting aside that time in your day to really dedicate to doing a picture book read aloud every day. So I think we're going to go to Angie now talking about doing this school-wide. Thank you, Jillian. And I wanted to sort of start off with touching on something that Jillian really mentioned, and that was just the community that was developed in her classroom and that her students really became more risk takers and had conversations that really weren't happening before. And what I'm going to talk a little bit about with school-wide is how that really looked for um, our building and sort of teachers becoming risk takers and that helping the students that we worked with becoming risk takers as well. So I did Classroom Book a Day and Read Stories school-wide and um, a lot of times one of the questions that I get as an instructional coach is how do you fit that into your time and into your schedule when your plate is already full and there are set times that I did and I really really made a commitment to sort of sticking with that time and um, honoring that commitment to the students and the teachers. So I'm going to share a little bit with you about some of the things that I did that sort of helped with that. And um, I'm always very honest when I say that I considered my real estate first and foremost. So my office is actually at the entrance of our school library. So I was in prime real estate to do a couple of different things. And one of those was to really book talk right outside my door when students were lining up. And I also partnered with our school librarian to do a central spot for a school-wide book display. So she was generous enough to give me a gigantic wall in our school library where I was able to um, add our pictures of our books that we've read every day. And that spot really became central to sharing books and talking about books. And it was a focal point at staff meetings. And um, it sort of led to some book talks that we began doing at staff meetings as well. And a lot of those books were books that the teachers asked if they could borrow from my personal selection of books and books that they then began to seek out on their own and recommend those to the staff as well. And some of the things that sort of happened really organically after that is that the, um, these book talks started happening in the teacher's lounge, in the copy room, in the hallway, and many other places other than just our staff meetings as well. And students also started doing more book talks. Um, many of these happened in our school library, but they also happened in the classroom library that students began to really focus on in their classroom as well. Some of the other fun things that we did as part of building the school-wide community were to do partner reads. and. When we get into some of our themes and the text sets that we've used um, later on, we really shared a lot with some elephant and piggy books. So if you can partner with some other people in your building, and I've partnered with PE teachers, I've partnered with counselors before, if you can partner read with someone else in your building um, that's not necessarily in the classroom teacher role, that really is super, super motivating to students for them to see just the different roles in your building and how they're sharing stories as well. Um, so we did a lot of partner reads and some of those happened really quickly, like right before we did a read aloud and some of those we planned based on the text as well. So some texts really do lend themselves nicely to partner reads and Mo Willems' Elephant and Piggy series, those are really, really good ones that also you know, do expose students to a lot of more mature themes as well with some simple text. And one of the other things that I did is um, I did really make an effort as an instructional coach to meet the teachers where they were. So I shared a lot on social media and not all of our teachers are on Twitter. Some of them are on Facebook. Some of them are on Instagram. Some of them are on not any of those avenues at all. So a couple of things that I did to sort of meet everybody where they were is I shared some of what we do on Facebook, which reached, you know, a certain group of people. I do share a lot on Twitter and we do have several staff members that sort of have gravitated toward that. And I also share a lot of what I do via email as well. So I really made an effort to sort of establish that community by also meeting teachers where they were and how I was sharing the books with them. So I used a lot of collages to do a summary post, usually um, on Friday or Saturday that I would send out in an email to the staff as well about the books that we've read. So one other thing that um, 
when you consider that real estate again, is that I did a small rotating display in my office. And again, a lot of that depended on um, where my space was located and it's located at the beginning of the library. This could really happen anywhere in your building, but it does generate more opportunities for book talk and for students to be exposed to different kinds of books and also for teachers to be sharing that as well. So I had a mini display with a small bookshelf that um, faced out so that when the students lined up, and I will say that every class lines up right outside my office. So it is a really nice space to share different titles that way. So I do a rotating display where I change out the titles. Um, sometimes I might focus on a different author right now. Coincidentally, um, as we were getting ready for the Ed Club gathering, I've been reading a lot of Kale Atkinson books. So on my rotating display right now, I have several of his titles that we've read so far um, and a poster that I have that I like to share as well. So, you know, really when you are advertising these books, they're, you need to be savvy with a little bit of marketing in terms of school-wide. Um, and I do sort of find what I can to generate that interest. And a couple other things that sort of happened after this is a lot of teachers are doing a mini display of what they are reading or just finished outside of their classroom door. And this is another great, simple way that we've been able to share a lot of titles um, during a busy day when um, we don't always have the time to talk, you still at least have that visual. And you know, one of the questions that I get is how, how do you stay true to this as a coach when you get pulled away from meetings? And I will say that I, I did speak with my principals before I started this and kind of let them know what I was going to do and why I wanted to do it. And they were 100% on board. So there are times that I have snuck out of meetings early and left to go do a read aloud and then came back into the meeting. And um, I think if you're honest up front about what your goals are and have the support of your staff with that, it does help with it being hugely successful.